a few decades ago i'm that old anyway i turned on the television and i was met with these words a preacher was screaming his voice hoarse he said the best way to get a new job a better job is to lose the one you have right now i'm thinking wait a minute dude what are you talking about what are you talking about you're supposed to be preaching good news and you're here peddling bad news and so on and so forth you want us to lose our jobs and so on but you see technically this man was spot on the best way to find the best thing that you want in your life is to let go or to lose that which you have at the moment what you have in the moment could be the stumbling block to what could be better what could be coming in your life so i am talking today about the seven ways to get to your next level and you want to stay tuned on to this one i'm tagging along this because i shared something small about this topic in episode number 87 but today in this episode i want to do justice to this message seven ways to get to your next level stay tuned Welcome to the Life Signatures podcast with Lawrence Namale. Lawrence is a life coach, author, and keynote speaker who loves to tackle different topics on purpose, productivity, and resilience. His mission in life is to awaken all your boundless possibilities available in you. Life Signatures podcast is dedicated to bring to reality every single person who knows that deep down in their gut, there's got to be more to life than this. And now, here is your host, Lawrence Namale. I'm going to jump right in and ask you a question. Let me ask you, what is your next level? How does it look like? Do you know what it is? Do you want it in the first place? Because if you don't want it, it's fine. Even God is okay with you because he fulfills the desires of those ones who ask. Ask, seek, knock. That's the three things that we need to do if we want to get into the next level. But if you are not desiring to go into the next level, listen, it's okay, it's fine. If you're comfortable with where you are, I mean, we shouldn't even be bothered, we shouldn't even be disturbing you, but I can tell you this. Every human being, all of us who came from a woman, we are always striving for better. Okay? Good, better, best. Do not let it rest until the good is better and the better is best. We are always striving for the next rung, the next best thing. That's why we've improved over the years. We we always have this discontentment, this dissatisfaction with the status quo. And I want to ask you again, what is your next level? What do you consider to be your next level? What do you want your next level to be at least even in the wanting phase? You see we are always in that mode. I remember very well I always desired to work. I was desiring even before I desired to work. My greatest desire was to go to college. I had just graduated from high school with a B minus and that B minus could not earn me a position into a government university. Failed off by 2 points or 1 point whatever it is but I couldn't get in. and i used to see my friends or my uh, in the community going out there and they coming back in the evening i am from kole as lingo in kenya for college i am from kole you know and we are studying this and i'm hungry i'm like god give me a way to be able to go to college see i was created to always desire the next level and the environment in which i was living was causing me to have that desire being stirred up and that's another thing you need to have you need to live in an environment where people are better than yourself 
because if you want to go to the next level hang around guys who are higher than yourself and i'm going just that's all for free by the way i didn't even plan to say that but this is the point after that opportunity for going to college came i grabbed it with both hands and that's another thing once you have an opportunity whatever it is you have in your hands do it so much so well so excellently so passionately 100% pour all else in it let nothing be left to chance that's the definition of life signatures in other words you wow people with what you have people who are wowed with me when they came to my study in the library and they came to my desk they will see piles of books you will feel sorry for wasting your mama's money coming to that school just to joke around for me that was it i poured myself into it and then when the college went and i was through with it i desired to have a job god give me a job i prayed i looked for opportunities i was my identity basically was messed up because i didn't have a job and i desired my next level was a job i desired so much and i got the job and that moment by the way any job will just suffice any job will just do and i got a job to be an it instructor teaching people microsoft 98 windows 98 teaching people how to double click you know and all those things and it was fun let me tell you in a space of about 7 month i was fed up with the job I wanted a new challenge. I knew I was better than that. I had learned everything there was to learn. I learned how to do all the graphics packages to teach them and to do something with them. I can create logos. I had learned all the accounting packages. I learned all the Microsoft Word. I had learned everything there was to learn on the computer apart from programming and I had even done some programming, you know, with Microsoft Access. You guy, I was turning everything upside down, but I was hungry for the next level. as a human being should be we all need to be hungry for the next level i got fed up with that place and listen the interesting thing <laughs> is that i got out of that place 5 years after i had been fed up with it why did i do that because i thought i didn't have an option i was waiting to get another job before i could get out of that place and the other job couldn't come Five years down the line, I got fed up. I walked out of that job. Okay, after attending an interview and thinking I had aced it, having my hopes so high, took a step of faith, quote unquote, and resigned from my Windows 98 instructor job. Walked out of that place and hoped for the better. The interview came. The results came. I flopped. They told me I was number 2. Number 2 for what? I wanted to be number 1. I needed to be number 1 to be able to get the job. They just had one position. Number 2 will not suffice and I do not know how long I stayed in the cold but I tell ya it was rough. It was tumble. It was topsy turvy. It was not easy to be out there but I can tell you in retrospect it was better to be in that position than to be stuck at that level that I was stuck at. Okay? Instead of being stuck at a particular level that you hate get out of it and build your wings on your way down and i'm vi- i'm being very motivational here you know what motivational speakers normally tell us the motivational speakers will cause you to do crazy stuff and i'm being exactly that at this moment but i'll tell you this when I, once i'm sobering up let me sober up and tell you this it is better for you to be outside of a position that you hate outside of a level that you hate than to be stuck there doing what you hate get out of it i'm telling you you will grow your wings on your way down i guarantee you if uh, that's why that preacher was actually right the best way to go to the next level to get the next job or the best job is to lose what you have at the moment and i lost the job that i had at that particular moment and let me tell you the good news is that the preacher was right because from that moment on after i lost the job of course the next thing that came to me was not a job it was out in the cold fending for myself trying to put two and two together going without meals begging for food at some point in time being fed with a landlord who was demanding his own rent i grew in that 
particular position but the next job that came I tell ya it was better bigger than the previous one I had it was more stable more promising than the one that I had and it is through that job that I am who I am today in other words I grew from that became like a stepping stone to who I am and who I am becoming and even much more so I don't know who I will be or where I will be if I had chosen to stay in that level that I was at anyway today we are talking about the seven ways to get to your next level and uh I can tell you this. See, next levels are different from one person to another. However, the ways of getting there are absolutely similar. Your next level might be to get married. Your next level might be to get a new job. Your next level might be to move to another location. Your next level might be to have a sizzling marriage. Your next level might be to have a new extra stream of income. Your next level might be to get a better house. Your next level might be whatever it is. But I can tell you this, it's different from one person to another and it's also different from one season to another. But the ways of getting there are absolutely the same i can tell you this whatever stuck situation you find yourself in whatever level you are at at the moment or whatever your dreams for the future might be your whatever your dreams for the next level might be there are only two major options of getting there number one, it is acute that means suddenly okay you make a decision sudden this happens instantly either by your own control or by forces outside of your control For example, you can resign like I did, okay? That is your own control or you can be fired from the job, which is someone else's responsibility for gazillions of reasons out there. Sometimes we see it coming for quite a while before we can either act or we are forced out, but for the most part, I find this to be the fastest way to get yourself to the next level instantly, acutely. The next is chronic. This means you do it gradually by a vision oriented approach. You set yourself up for the next level. You calculate, you plan, you inculcate systems and processes. These things that we've been discussing in the previous episodes, you build in some daily routines. You you know depend on your internal factors. You hunger for the next level. You have a passion, you have a discipline, you have foundations, you lay down, you reach out and you chronically graduate into the next level which is totally and fully in your control but i can tell you this we need both ways in order to get into our next level sometimes we just just need to take a risk and when you're risking that is acute and for the most part we need to be calculative exactly calculative so that you can get into our next level so here are the seven ways in which you can get into your next level are you ready number 1 be desirous i have already mentioned that if you are okay with being okay if you are comfortable with being comfortable even god himself is comfortable with that because he doesn't want you to be unhappy maybe you do not want your next level maybe you do but just how badly do you want it on a scale of 1 to 10 one being least intensive and 10 being most intensive how badly do you want your next level your assignment here is to get your intensity above an 8 if you were to desire so intensely your next level is directly proportional connected to your desire factor you cannot have a desire of 1 on a scale of 1 to 10 one being less intensive and expect to get your next level it doesn't even feature you are okay you are comfortable with the status quo you don't want out you maybe you're not pained enough or you're not passionate enough to get out pain or passion those things desire people who have a desire of 10 will be the ones ripe for the next level if your desire to get to the next level is below a 5 forget it so what level what is your intensity today 
of your desire for your next level. And what did he, like I asked you earlier, what is your next level? What is it? Do you know it? Clarity is power. Be exactly clear about what your next level is. Let me tell you what my next level is. My next level here is to be a best-selling author and a producer of a course for leading people into knowing what their purpose is. That's my next level. That's my desire. It's a 10 and I am at it. My next level is to monetize my website and I am at it. What is your next level and how is your desire? Do your part. Let those who make decisions do theirs. Let the universe do their, do its own work. But your part it is to be desirous. Number two, if you want to go to your next level, number two, identify your options. For the five years that I was stuck, I only had one option. And that option was what? Drop your CVs from one place to another and uh, get a job through an interview. Truth be told, there are many, 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 many options out there that you and I can generate. The problem is we've been schooled to think that the only option available at life is a job. Let me tell you, to mention just a few, I think the area of your natural gifts and talents, it is an area that is a huge potential, huge options, one that has been underutilized for decades since people started getting employed. Someone has lied to us that there is no money in pursuing your talents and we have taken that lie, hook, line and sinker. See, I can tell you that this thing pays. The other day we saw someone breaking a record of running a marathon under two hours and then the next day someone else broke a Chicago marathon record and so on and so forth. And those guys are earning from their gifts and from their talents. We see people who are earning, you know, this, this girl, uh, this woman in Nigeria called Chimamanda Ngonzi. She writes and writes and writes. That's a talent. That's a gift. It's an option. And let me tell you, that moment that I was stuck, I had a voice I could use. And I had a gift of writing that I could use, but I wasn't writing. Put it in the back burner. And I thought my only option was a job. The second area that you can consider for an option is installation of a new habit. In other words, you practice something until you become a guru and a genius in it. And frankly, we all have habits that we would like to start in our new lives. Reading, brainstorming, focus on the family, jogging, writing, meditating, and so on. It is these small habits carefully inculcated in our routines daily that will chronically position us to take the next level. Remember, you can go there acutely or chronically. And the third way in which you can consider options is when you take up a new challenge. You do not have to wait for a promotion, for an outside force to usher you out or for your next level. You can decide to take up a new challenge that is firmly within your passion, firmly within your mission. And even if that challenge is fell, at, fell outside your passion, your mission, you take, just taking it up, it will be a valuable lesson you know, than staying put in the current level that you hate. There are many examples. You can decide, let me write a book. Let me start a seminar series let me start a blog let me start a podcast let me start a mastermind group let me run a marathon let me do something about my physical body let me see if i can get an extra stream of income and so on and so forth there basically you need to sit down and generate as many options as possible there will be lousy options there will be impossible options there will be easy options there will be obvious options there will be not so obvious options but i'm telling you when you sit down you can be able to generate options that can give you the next level the question is how often do you sit down to generate options in your life so if you wanted to go to the next level number two sit down and then generate options Okay, we cannot choose, we cannot decide to, to continue being stagnant in our lives because stagnancy is a moral buster, you know, whether caused by a setback or just being in the process, it is a moral buster. Inherently, we all need to have this forward motion, forward momentum, you see, move from one area of our lives to another into the next level. And so, number three. 
very critical if you wanted to get to the next level number three you should identify what your difference in life is and that's what i shared briefly on point number two identify what differentiates you from the world or from the rest of the people because god made everybody unique do you love crocodiles i love you using that crocodiles example by the way i mean what is your heart beating towards what is a heart what is your heart's desire what is your difference See, life signatures are necessarily unique from one person to another. Your difference should be able to create a point from which you can stand up and see your next level. And I'm telling you, it's not going to be an overnight thing. Just identifying your difference is an entry point, is a door through which you can walk instead of being stuck. By the way, you can walk through that door either chronically that's why people normally say, I have a side business, I have a side gig, I have this that I'm doing while I'm at my job. And Miles Monroe says that the best hour of your life is after 5 o'clock. That's when you can work on your dream. But what's your difference? See, what is your capacity? What is, what is this thing that is inside of you? Do you see that you can speak and you can inspire and you can motivate and you don't have an audience yet? You start by speaking in the mirror or speaking in an imaginary microphone or start by preparing speeches or start by attending Toastmasters and and all those things. It comes from what you're passionate about. It comes from what you are gifted with. It comes from what your mission in life is. By the way, that's another area where you want probably to just have this thing in life done maybe for you it's saving the children there's a man who had an organization started called save the children there's a man who had an organization started called compassion international because he looked at what his passion was inside of his heart and he created his own next level there's a man whose passion was chicken i mean fried chicken kentucky fried chicken that was his passion and he created a conglomerate that is all over the world see your next level can be found in your difference if you find what your difference is number four if you want to go to the next level i found this to be one of the most universal methods of landing into the next level and it applies to everyone else out there whether you are high born, low born, whether you're in the village or in the urban city, whether you're a boy or a girl, whether you're male or female, whether you're this or that. Number four, set goals and take action. Set goals and take action. You saw that coming, didn't you? See, at the heart of intentionality, at the heart of being intentional in getting to the next level it is the subject of goal setting goal setting is the discipline of documenting your wishes your desires your dreams on paper complete with the time frames and the actions for fruition that is your next level basically remember the desires we have that you know we've talked about in the previous episodes This is how you start to crystallize them on paper. You churn them in your mind through and through and you set goals and you see what resources can I have. And I found out that we stop going to the next level because we sadly think that we need resources before we go to the next level. And I found out that what we need is the intention and the clarity of what the goal is. Once you have responded with clarity, there's a quote, I forget how it goes, but it says, when you move with clarity, the world responds or the universe responds with clarity. In other words, when you're clear that you want to go from point A to point B, all of a sudden, you start seeing resources, possibilities of resources getting close by. This podcast was a desire. It was a possibility, it was a dream, it was a goal. And all of a sudden, it became a reality. All through obstacles, by the way, because I went to Amazon and I told Amazon, I want to purchase this podcast studio. And they told me, we cannot ship to Uganda. 
And at the moment I was complaining that I can't ship to Uganda, a friend overheard me. She says, no problem. A sister of mine works for an airline. She can ship this thing in for you. Voila! The podcast is here. We are doing this number 136. Because I had a goal. And I took action. And now I am living my next level. Now every single morning what I do is to inspire the world, to inspire the universe. I'm seeing how many guys have been inspired today. 60 people, 100 people, 200 people. How many people in this month I am targeting to inspire? Thousands of people every month. And by the way, I'm so excited because there are 55 countries that are accessing live signatures radio and it's because it's my next level which came through goal setting number five if you want to get into the next level please do build reserves very extremely extremely critical remember two ways of getting to the next level either acutely or chronically But if you wanted to chronically get into the next level, you've got to build reserves. In other words, use your current level to build your ladders for tomorrow. If it's financial reserves, if it's friends, if it's connection, if it's your capacity, if it's, you know, going to school and adding in one skill or another, going and getting one certificate or another, being certified in one area or another, build reserves. You cannot get into your next level just like that, you've got to have either an acute way of doing it or gradually. And if you're to do it gradually, you will need reserves. Start from where you are. Build whatever reserves you need for your next level. For the most part, these reserves are normally financial. Save for that podcasting studio. Save for that website. Save for this and save for that. Put some money aside. It could be that you do not have the financial power at the moment to see through your next level. However, you could gradually start piling up coins, finances, through careful strategies, woven strategies outlined by a financial planner. In fact, the most common method of people getting to the next level, it is through building reserves. In our day and age, It is also important to build reserves in relationship, reserves in knowledge. You're going to get to your next level if you prepare for it, period. So that's number five. Number six, you're going to get into your next level if you bring together men and women of like passions and you start a mastermind and you say, how can we do this? I remember a friend of mine bringing us together and saying, we need to start up this. This is the idea that I have. If you have an idea and you cannot do it yourself, bring people together. Use your available capacity, social capital. It is one of the most important capitals you can have. Two are better than one. It's not just a sound advice. It is scripture. It is a powerful principle. See, I came from the background where people get together for the success of others, mostly in terms of weddings. And by the way, it's a new level, isn't it? It's a next level. And I have never seen those things fail. I have never seen masterminds where people are sitting down and discussing because two guys are falling in love and they will want to marry one another. I have never seen such masterminds failing. Only in few occasions where people have run away with the money that has been raised. And even in those cases, those guys still got married. And one of them was my friend. People coming together and doing something together, especially if you have an idea, it is one of the ways you can get into your next level. And lastly, if you want to get into the next level, guess what? Take the leap. Close your eyes jump. I remember (laughs) there's a time that I read Richard Branson's book and he said that an aunt of his challenged him. He needed money so badly and they were crossing a river or something and then the aunt challenged him that you cannot swim there. And the guy said watch me. Got out of the car. I don't know if I'm getting the story right. Got out of the car and jumped into that was the first time he was swimming. Jumped into that place and he knew he could drown but he didn't. He swam and he got what he wanted. He took a leap. After all is said and done, the journey of a thousand miles starts with one single step. The fear of the unknown has been responsible for robbing all of us 
of great next levels, including myself. In fact, I dare say that very many people are scared of success because it has responsibility. We have to go through failure sometimes. We have to go through discomfort and we have to go through the unknown, the untested, the undetermined. And some people never really take that leap for the next level because it is a process. If you want to go to the next level, take the leap. Come on, ask her out. Okay, ask him out. I know that's weird, but do something for your next level. It is not that we lack ideas. We do have ideas in droves. It is the unknown. It is the what if. It is those questions that paralyze us. What if I fail? Suppose I fail. Suppose they laugh at me. Suppose I am ashamed. So we'd rather stay in our known levels, in our known comfort zones, than we venture out. And the actual thought there is that there is no guarantee <laughs> that we're going to succeed or we're going to see our next level. I saw a quote on Facebook attributed to the legendary Jack Kenfield that goes something like this. Those on top of the mountain did not fall there. In fact, I remember it's Zig Ziglar who says that people do not wander around and they find themselves on top of Mount Everest. They do take the leap. So, ladies and gentlemen, those are the seven ways in which you can get to your next level. And I'm sure you can implement any one of those levels today. You will get your next level either acutely or chronically. The ball is always going to be in your court or in your hands. Thanks for listening and bye-bye. Thank you for listening to Life Signatures Radio. If you enjoyed today's show, subscribe to Life Signatures Radio on iTunes, Stitcher, or visit our website at lifesignatures.libsyn.com. Life Signatures Radio, fresh, clean, and inspiring.